Hello, fourth grade readers. I am Mrs. Lamando back to bring you our font to Simpanel mini lesson of the day. So let's get started. We're all the way up to LA U18 lesson two. And a friendly reminder, we're really focused on nonfiction right now. Books that are about real life topics, not made up. So first to start, we're gonna listen to a book called The Scraps Book. Let's especially pay attention to pages 21 to 22. What do the thumbnail sketches for Feathers for Lunch show us? What does it tell us about the big idea of the book, the big lesson that can be learned, what this book is all about? The Scraps Book, Notes from a Colorful Life by Lois Ehlert. When I was little, I read all the books on the library shelf, and I thought maybe someday I can make a book. I was lucky. I grew up with parents who made things with their hands. Mom loved to sew. She had colorful fabric, scraps, buttons, lace, ribbons, and many scissors she shared with me. Dad had a basement workshop. He gave me wood scraps and taught me how to paint, saw, and pound nails. So I had wonderful art supplies and tools close at hand. In a small corner of our house, Dad set up a folding table for me. It was my spot, a place to work and dream. When I grew up and left home for art school, my table went with me. After art school, I worked in an art studio by day and worked on book ideas at night. I created lots of art, though not for books right away. But I didn't worry. Everyone needs time to develop their dreams. An egg in the nest doesn't become a bird overnight. Where do book ideas come from anyway? I know, I find ideas in the world around me. I've even found them in my garden or while shopping at the fruit and vegetable store. When a squirrel slipped into my house, a book idea walked right up to me. On a trip to the aquarium while I watched colorful fish swim by, a book idea swam into my brain. I sketched and made notes before it floated away. I keep my eyes open. An idea may be close by. Once when I visited my sister, her cat brushed my ankles as he escaped out the door. A new idea. First, I wrote the story from the cat's viewpoint. It went something like this. Doors left open, just a crack, going out. Might not be back. Food in a can is not too exciting when there are things I'd rather be biting. Then I wrote the story from the cat's owner's point of view. Here's how it changed. Oh, oh, doors left open, just a crack. My cat is out and he won't come back. His food in a can is tame and mild, so he's gone out for something wild. After writing a story, I sketched the whole book, figuring out what to illustrate on each page. Back and forth, I work on the pictures and words until together they tell a story. My art technique is called collage. I cut out scraps like pieces of a puzzle that I assemble and glue into place. I'm messy when I work. My waste baskets overflow. Scraps lie strewn all over the studio and more scraps stick to the bottom of my shoes. But when ideas are flowing, I keep working. I often combine real objects with painted ones. I use odd tools to create texture. I splatter paint with a toothbrush or rub a crayon over my grater. Sometimes I photograph folk art from my collection to illustrate a story. I use what's close at hand, just as I did when I was growing up. Sometimes I go for a walk looking for good stuff. 
Mother Nature gives me free art supplies. Day after day I work until the art looks just right to me. You might ask, why did I choose to be an artist? I think maybe it's the other way around. Art chose me. If you feel that way too, I hope you'll find a spot to work and begin. I wish you a colorful life. I love that. So when we're thinking about that book, what is the big idea? Today we saw in the scraps book that the author used rough sketches for all of the pages of the book. The big idea could be that writing and illustrating takes a lot of planning. We noticed that graphics, such as diagrams and maps, are important to nonfiction books. Nonfiction authors often use these things to help us understand the bigger ideas. When you are reading a nonfiction book today, pay attention to the graphics and how they add to the information. All right, fourth grade readers, that's all for today. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to check in with your classroom teacher. Until next time, bye.